30.5 phloem. Now back to vascular tissue, we have the xylem already discussed in 30.3, and now we move on to phloem. Now phloem um, is located on the outer part of the vascular bundle uh, next to the cortex. Now um, phloem is responsible for transporting uh, sap, which is uh, contains sugar made during photosynthesis, um, water, minerals, amino acids, hormones, um, and that sort of thing. But m primarily it's responsible for, for transporting the sugar and organic nutrients produced by the plant. Uh, now, the way that the phloem transports these um, sugars is through sieve tubes. These are cells that are alive at functional ma maturity, unlike the xylem where they are dead. Uh, however, the sieve tubes are missing a nucleus and ribosomes in order to make more room for the transport of the sugars. Uh, now, because of this, they have companion cells which are located on the sides of the sieve tubes. Now, the companion cells do have a nucleus and organelles, ribosomes, etc. And so, this nucleus and ribosomes can help guide uh, the functions of, of the sieve tube cells. Now, a sieve tube uh, does have a sieve plate on the top and the bottom to help increase or allow, I guess, the transportation of the nutrients up and down the, the sieve tube. Now, the um, companion cell is connected to the sieve tube by plasmodesmata. So if we look here at a couple of plant cells, um, you know, each of these is an individual plant cell. They are connected by plasmodesmata, which if this was plant cell number one, uh, here's the vacuole and the cytoplasm. Here's plant cell number two with the vacuole and the cytoplasm. And this is a cell wall between the two. Uh, plasmodesmata is a, like a gap or an opening between the two where the cytoplasms are connected so that materials can easily flow from one cell to the next. And that is how um, like a companion cell would be here and then the sieve tube of the phloem would be here so that materials can easily be transported between them. Now, we have the xylem that transports water, and then we have the phloem that's going to transport uh, sugar, for example. So it usually transports from a source, a sugar source, to a sink. So the source is where the sugar comes from. Now this is going to be a photosynthetic cell, a cell that does photosynthesis to make the sugar. Now as the sugar builds up inside, um, inside the plant cell, it's going to get full, kind of, right? and it's going to go into the companion cell and then from the companion cell cross through the plasmodesmata and enter into the phloem. Now it's going to flow in the direction towards its sink. So then from the phloem it goes into the companion cell again and into the sink. Now a sink is going to be any type of cell that needs the sucrose. Um, so it could be a root cell that's growing and needs the, the sugar could be a fruit, like an orange or an apple growing on the tree. Um, basically anywhere that needs the suc sucrose. Um, okay. Now, uh, loading at the source, there's a, a theory called the pressure flow theory that explains how or why the phloem flows in the way it does. And so the source, if there's a lot of photosynthesis happening here in the mesophyll, Remember the ground tissue, so here's the dermal tissue, the derm epidermis. Then we have the mesophyll tissue where photosynthesis is occurring. These little green things are the chloroplasts. Now they're going to make sugar during photosynthesis and the amount is going to increase and build up. Eventually it's going to get pushed or the pressure increases so much it gets pushed into the vascular tissue, the phloem here, where now it will flow to its sink. Now. A xylem always flows, the water always flows from, uh, from roots to the tips. Now in the phloem, the sugar will flow in either direction. It depends where the source and where the sink are. If the source is a leaf and the sink is a root, then it's going to flow in the downward direction. If the source is a leaf and the uh, sink is a fruit, for example, it might flow up. So the phloem is different that way in that the the sugar can flow in either direction, 
um, and the cells are alive at the same time. That's called a, oh, the pressure flow theory. 